Hi. Uh, somebody told me a few days back that the theme of TEDx, Relentless Curiosity, means being able to ask a lot of annoying questions. And I remember thinking, well, I can do that. So let me start with one. What do you think is the best way someone with absolutely no background in computers can create games, animations, and all sorts of interactive content like that? Obviously, the first best way is to get someone who knows how to do it, to do it for you. But that's kind of boring, right? So I'm going to talk about the second best thing, which I think is to just write it down on a piece of paper. <laughs> uh, is my slides up? OK, it's to just write it down just like you would on a piece of paper, except for a few curly braces here and there. And then you press a button. And voila, you get an animation. Well, that's kind of a tragic story. Uh, <laughs> but to tell you how uh, we ended up with an idea like this, I'll have to take you back in time. Back to a time when I was five years old and about uh, this tall. And I sneaked out of my classroom, sneaked out of my school, and managed to get myself lost in the big wide world. Somehow, one of my teachers found me, and I was back in school the next day. But I ran away again, and again, and again. And luckily for me, someone I knew always used to find me every single time. The problem was I was scared of having to sit in a classroom doing things that did not get me excited. And it may seem strange to many of you, but I believe it was a real physical fear and not just a feeling of boredom. And the reason I'm sharing this with you is the same reason why I showed you a demo right at the beginning. I'm going to spend the next seven minutes of my talk trying to confer one of my oldest fears, having to sit silently at one place doing nothing. So here I go. Okay, I'm not going to do that, uh, <laughs> but that's pretty much how long I used to last even back then. The only thing that used to keep me in place were things like stories and mysteries that used to fill me up with a sense of wonder about the world around me. So when I grew up and ended up creating a company with two of my friends at college, one of the questions that we eventually asked ourselves is, how do we put wonder back at the center of our educational practices? And I started talking about it with teachers from different schools across India that we used to work with. And to my surprise, not only did they connect with the problem, but they also had hundreds of ideas about how to solve them. And many of these ideas revolved around giving students both emotional excitement as well as intellectual stimulation at the same time, thereby bringing back wonder into the classroom. Uh, so we started researching and building over 100 different games, animations, stories uh, for these teachers. And they took it back to their classrooms. And just as they had predicted, the kids loved it. Uh, this is a couple of uh, teasers which I thought I'll uh, share with you. But soon we realized that this was not enough because the teachers did not know how to create these games and animations by themselves. So they used to often come back to us and they were left waiting when we were trying to figure out how to put together the resources, the team, the money required to keep building these games and stories. So we started asking ourselves if we were introducing a change that is as dangerous as it is useful, because now technology was replacing a good part of the teacher's role in teaching. So we went back to the drawing room and started asking ourselves, how do we put the teacher back at the center of teaching in our model? And we realized that the teacher was indeed at the center at every stage, except the stage which involved creation of the technology. 
and that meant we had to somehow figure out a way by which people who had absolutely no background with computers create their own interactive content all by themselves. Uh, that was obviously a hard problem and we didn't know where to start until we figured out that someone had already done it before and they had done a brilliant job. The folks who invented the concept of blogging. Just think about what happens when you blog. You just type down something that you have in your mind and you click a button and all the required HTML, JavaScript and other codes are automatically put together to give you something that you can take back and share it with everyone, a blog post. And this simple idea completely changed the way content gets generated on the web. And today, user-generated content dominates the web, be it Wikipedia, blogs, or social networks. So the question that we are asking ourselves today is, can we do to interactive educational content what Blogger did to writing? The parallel goes a long way once you start thinking about it. But what I wish for is more and more people working with educational technologies to ask themselves this question, because then, sooner or later, one of us will get there. And the idea is really simple. Uh, the teacher, the parent, or the user does something that he or she is familiar with, type or speak, let's say something like this. And the computer tries to understand what they mean by relating it with words which it already knows, like this is the title, this is the background, and doggy is a dino, woohoo is a caveman, and so on and so forth. And what you get is something like this. Or someone sh types something like this, telling the computer that it is a game and I want physics of gravity, elasticity, friction, and in each level you have a bat, you have a ball, all these things happen. And then press a button and you get a game in which someone, let's say, sh types the angle in order to make the ball go into the globe. And you can change elements like gravity and friction and see how different objects behave as things change. So uh, that's the idea. And uh, the reason why it excites me a lot is not only does it democratize the process of creation, like what Blogger did, but it also lets you edit and improve upon these games and animations which others have created, just like how Wikipedia lets you do with its articles. And this is something that is not possible with interactive content produced in the traditional methods. And uh, the reason why this excites me is it relates to one of the larger problems in educational research that a uh, lot of people have been trying to solve. And that is, how do you make uh, the teaching methods adapt to the individual learning styles of the kid so as to produce better learning? Imagine a classroom where the teacher shares a lesson, say, as an English text, and one of the students sees it as a French movie, the other sees it as a game, the other sees it as a rhyme or a song. Now that's the kind of classroom that we wish to see and I hope that someday soon every parent, every teacher would be creating new wonderful interactive content for their kids all by themselves. Thank you.